Hello, just wanted to do a quick tutorial on this church window. Um, this is how it assembles. It's already um, just put together. So I'm just going to go ahead and take it apart. So the first piece, um, well actually it's the last piece once you assemble it, is the snowflake. So I'm just going to go ahead and take it off. And there are two of these. You don't need to use both of these, but I just like it for the height, just to add a little extra dimension. So, and then there's these little uh, berries and one of them to go through my crumb tray. So there are only four. So just be careful when you take these off your laser that you don't lose some of the little berries. So I'm just gonna move that up so you can see. So that just fits right in there. I'm just gonna show you once again. So it just fits right in there. I'm gonna take that off. And then this piece fits right in there, right on top of that piece. I'll take that off and then we have our little berries that go on this here this little sprig take those off and then there's this extra piece that is really just to give it height you do not need to cut both of them you can if you want to i just prefer it that's just preference and then this is our big piece and you can place it however you want you can place it this way or this way i just like it this way um that's just preference and then there's this piece here and then it goes on top this does not use much material. I did nest it inside here um, in the file so that way when you're ready to go, it does not take up a lot. Maybe I would say um, just a little over, maybe about a half a sheet, not even, because this is actually quite small. It's only about seven inches or so. It's really not that big if you see it compared to my hand. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take this all apart. I am going to go ahead and paint this piece. And I did make them in ornament size too. They're a little different for the ornaments. So we have these. Um, there are three different ones for the ornaments. And then there's this one. And there's three different little winter florals on here. Apologize, it's a little loud outside. I'm outside today because it is really nice out. Don't get too many warm days in November here in New York. So I am going to be outside. All right, in my garage. All right. So I am using folk art chalk paint. I bought this at Joann's. You can get it at Michael's, Hobby Lobby, um, probably even Amazon. I'm sure, you get everything on Amazon. These are $9.99 at, I think it's, Joann's has it for $9.99. I think you can get around that same price everywhere else. And then you can use a coupon. So, big container of it lasts a very long time. The only thing is, they are hard to open. <laughs> so, I definitely recommend having a jar opener when you go to open these because they do get a little crusty. All right. Here we go. And I am going to start with this piece here and I'm gonna get my brush and I just buy um, just random brushes at Michaels you don't need to have expensive brushes I don't feel like you need to um, really just you know your average like brush like this and you can get these in those packs at Michaels and then use a coupon don't forget your coupons all right so here we are I'm just gonna uh, start over here. I sh probably should have tapped off the extra paint, but I'm going to start on a spot where there's a lot of extra space. There we go. And you don't have to get worry about getting this edge piece because this piece is going to be covered up by this here. So you don't have to make it perfect right there. So you just want to make sure you get it in the spots that are going to be shown. And this does not have to be perfect because I am going to go ahead and antique it. So I'm just kind of brushing it on. I feel like I want to get some texture, so it doesn't have to be perfect. I really wanted to do church windows, but I know a lot of people have done church windows and I really wanted to do something much different than what other people have done. So I kind of did some research and these were a style of window at my church that I grew up in when I was little, where I was baptized. And I always loved staring at the windows. 
So it's a, a type of style. It's similar, not exact, because I don't want to copy, but I kind of modified the window from my old church. It's in that style. So I'm just going to wipe off that extra. I don't want to get the paint inside there, so I'm just going to wipe it off with my finger. I just really wanted to have a different style window than everybody else did. So I don't know if people like this style or not, but I just thought they looked really cool. I'm just gabbing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab a little bit more paint. There we are. I'm just gonna go back and add a little bit more on here. And I am going to go back and antique this. I'm gonna use, I think I might use the art crayons. I really like the art crayons a lot, but I do have the ink pads too. Those are a lot of fun. I've been playing around with a lot of different ways to antique. Like I said, you do not have to worry about getting this spot here. You really just wanna make sure you focus on getting these spots. I just really want to make sure I don't get it in those those edges. There we go. And this is just the folk art white. Um, I think it's called it's white Adirondack. That's the name of this paint. And it's just a plain old white. It's nothing exciting. They do make other shades of white. Um, there's milk jug. I use that a lot and sheepskin. They're a little bit of an off-white. I'm just going to go ahead and really get it on there. All right. And I'm going to do the same exact thing for the ornaments. I'm not going to do the ornaments on this video. I'm just going to do this so you can get an idea because the ornaments are exactly the same, pretty much the same style. So you'll get the idea of how to assemble this. It's pretty much the same. They just layer right on top. And I really didn't want to um, weld the shape right on here in case you wanted to leave it plain. I wanted to have more versatility in the file. So you can take, you can do it with the florals or without the florals. And I'm thinking I want to do something like kind of a cool darker background so it makes this white really pop. I'm thinking maybe a dark gray would look really cool. Or maybe even a black. That would look really, really sharp. All right. I'm just going to add a little here. And I just want to make sure I really get these lines. There we are. I want to get those in there. Okay. I just want to get a little bit on the edge here just in case I don't glue it perfectly. I just don't want any of that MDF to show. Because I know I go to put that piece on and the second I set it down, that glue will stick immediately. And I am the worst at gluing. I don't know about you guys, but I am not the best at gluing. All right, so I feel like I'm pretty confident with that. I'm just gonna go over to this side, get over here, and then this will be pretty much done. And then I'm gonna go to the next one. There we are. I don't even know if these are even gonna show too much. Okay. I just really want to make sure that I get enough coverage. And I did use a compressor on this, so I didn't get any soot. I put my compressor on. Um, it's the one that is recommended for the Mira on the laser outpost page. I bought that compressor and it has 
been awesome because now I don't have any soot or any of that char and my lines look really clean and I really love having that. I just put it on 30 for the um, pressure. I think that's what you call it, pressure. Um, so it's really nice and I don't get that char and then I don't have to worry about trying to sand or clean that up or prime. My paint goes on really smooth. All right, there we go. So I'm just gonna double check and make sure that that covers. And it looks like it does. All right, that looks good. Yep, all right. So now I'm gonna set this over here to dry. I might need a little bit more, but we'll see. All right, so here's our other piece. I'm going to do the same color, but this time I, I might add a little bit different antiquing on this. We'll see how it goes. I'm winging this. I don't have a plan in my head. I just, I'm going with the flow. If it doesn't work out, it's okay. We live and learn. At school, at my job, our, we have design principles and this month for November is success and failures. And they always say, don't worry about, don't worry about making mistakes because that's where you learn your best. If you make a mistake, it's okay. Because then you learn and then you do it differently the next time. It's all good. I don't know how many files I've scrapped because I'm like, what? I messed that up and then I've scrapped it. But you know what? Then I made something better the next time. I'd rather scrap it than put it out. So that's why I test everything and paint everything myself most of the time. I don't use a lot of testers because I'd rather test everything and make sure everything is done right. I, also, I do use testers once in a while just to like get some second, third opinions, but I always like to make sure. I always test. I test every file pretty much myself. All right. So always make sure that these files work. Okay. So this is just about done. I'm excited to try some new antiquing. What would look really cool on this would be some patina paints. I think that would look really sharp. Make it look metallic, like rusty. I really think a rusty one would look really neat. I should do another one with the rusty paint. The Dixie Belle patina paint is really cool. I like the iron one the best because it really looks like metal. It looks so cool. The copper is cool because I like that blue but I think that that iron one it just looks like real rust and it actually is chunky it's like textured I really like that one so if you're gonna buy one I like that one just because if you're looking for that real rusty look the iron and I think there's only one of the activators that works with iron I want to say it's it's the green I'm not sure but that one's really fun and then you can if you want to try that out just try one of the activator sprays and then the iron they are a little pricey okay so here we are there's that I'm pretty happy all right so I'm going to do I'm thinking I want to try maybe a gray like a dark gray would look really nice or even a light gray would look pretty cool let's take a look what do i have oh i like this one this one is called castle that would look really cool so this one is a really pretty color it's again the folk art this is just a small version of this i actually have a big version of this too um, if you ever want to try these out, Hobby Lobby does have these small bottles. I have looked in the other stores, Joann's Michaels. I have not seen the small versions at those stores. Um, but if you want to try the small ones, Hobby Lobby. All right, I'm going to grab another brush. I'm going to grab a bigger brush. I'm going to grab this bigger brush because... 
It's a pretty big surface to work with. I'm just gonna grab a big chunk of this and just go to town. I really like this. This is a good color. It's almost like a grayish. It's like a gray beige. I like that. That's a good one. If you can see that. That is Castle. All right. I like these big brushes. You can get a lot of paint on really fast. So I'm going to try this and see how it looks. I'm probably going to dry brush over this just to antique it up too. Just I'll antique it up. I'm not sure if that's even a word, but it is what it is. There we are. And I'm making a mess. Get a little bit more. Very fun. So there's this. Making a mess, getting it all over the sides. I try not to get it on the sides, but I just wipe it off. And then I do use the ink pads to kind of rub along the edges to try to fix those edges so it doesn't look bad. All right. There we go. Looking good. So that is Castle. I like this color a lot. Very nice. Let's kind of smooth it out. There's that color. That looks really pretty. Alrighty. I'm going to let this dry. I'm just going to set it over here. And I am going to do the floral piece and see how clean this is. This is what by using a compressor. Um, if you have a mirror series laser, uh, I'm not sure about the Ohm Tech or Thunders. I think you can put a um, hook up a compressor to those too. But this is really nice. You don't even see like look at how clean that is. Like you don't even see a lot of char. Like I think a little bit there, but otherwise um, you don't even see any char. There's no char. It's just this is awesome. I love having a compressor. All right, so I'm going to, I think I'm going to paint these green. I'll just do the whole thing green. And then I'm going to dry brush over that. I have special brushes I like to use for dry brushing, but they are just cheap brushes. Um, this is what happens. Um, chalk paint gets a little chunky. Um, it chunks up after a while. If you don't put the tops on right away, if you leave them off too long. All right, so. I'm gonna just dip right in here. Um, chalk paint does get thick, just to warn you. Okay, so the only parts that are going to show really are these pine needles. So I don't wanna go too, too crazy. And then some of these little berries. And that's why I have those pieces that glue over the top. So you don't have to worry about painting perfectly um some people don't want to have to worry about painting like perfection like i don't paint very well so don't worry if you're the kind of person that just likes to slop the paint on like me then you are in luck because i am not like the best painter i just like to slap the paint on i want to get done and i'm the kind of person where i am very impatient i just want to hurry up and get things done so you see how fast I'm doing this. I'm just slapping the paint on. I am no Bob Ross. I am just slapping the paint on. So here we are. Normally I'd be watching TV at the same time I'm doing this and I'd be even faster because I'd be distracted watching some type of show. I'm gonna try to get those little pieces in between here because I'm gonna be gluing the, uh, the little berries on. And then this is going to be painted too. 
I'm just gonna do all these. You can paint them all different colors. You really don't have to paint them all the same. I'm just being lazy. This is just my laziness. And I am going to antique it. So I'm gonna probably put a little bit of green here. I'm probably gonna put a little bit of red. You know what I'm going to do? I just decided. I think I am going to put some red on these berries. So I'm going to do a little bit of red on them. So let me dry brush these first. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of red. Here we are. And this, don't forget, is going to be, um, you're gonna glue stuff over this, on this, 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 and this. So you don't have to worry about that at all. So I'm gonna set that over here. And I am going to choose a different green. I have this green and it is called antique green and I'm just gonna shake it up quick and to show how lazy I am I am going to even use the same brush I'm not even going to change brushes I'm not even worried I'm just gonna take some of that paint off quite lazy I mean it's green it's the way I look at it and if they coat the colors mix, it's okay. I'm not even worried. Any way to save time. Because during the holidays, we don't have a lot of time for stuff. We just want to get things done. All right. It's a pretty color. It's another one of these folk art paints. All right. And, I, and you don't have to paint both of these if you're using both. You only have to paint one because you're going to be gluing one on top of the other. So I'm going to go ahead and just quickly brush this on. And you don't have to use multiple greens. You can use the same. It doesn't matter. Look at that. Because how you antique it will make them look like totally different greens like you can use a black dry brush over it or a white dry brush over it and it will make it look like two totally different color paints all right there and i got my little berries i'm just gonna set the berries over here I think I'm gonna do the berries red. All right. Oh, I need some more green. I really like this green. It's a nice Christmassy green. What is this again? Antique? Antique green. Really like these chalk paints. They just go on so nicely. And a lot of times you only really need one coat because they are really thick. They cover really nicely. There we go. All right. Good to go. All right. So I'm just going to set this over here. I am going to come back with my white brush so I had the white paint on I am gonna wipe some of this white paint off my lovely tops add because I don't want to have too too much white paint on it and I'm going to like kind of just dust right over the top and I'm going to make it look like there's snow on the pine needles so there it is so you can see that it looks like two different color greens so here's our snow on the pine needles. There it is. There we are. I love how that comes out. So just kind of rub it gently over the top. Don't use too much paint, otherwise your pine needles are going to look like they are completely covered in snow. So you wanna see that green showing through. Same thing again over here. Just gently rub right over the top. 
there you have it. Just very gently. Just add a little bit more, I think. I might add a little bit on these berries. And I am going to come back and add some red on those berries. There we are. Cute. I'm going to put a little bit over here on the edge where the in between where I'm going to put those those berries. All right. So there it is. There we go. And I could even put a little touch on this. Unless it's a little wet. I could put a little touch on this here because this is going to go here. I'm going to see how I like that. Like, hmm, I could add a little bit. Just a hair. Just a little bit. Make it look like it's got a little touch of snow. Look at that. That looks nice. There. Let's see how I like it. Perfect. Oops, my finger got stuck. There we go. I'm pretty happy with that. Should I add a little bit on this one? What do you think? I think I will. I'm just kind of gently rub this right over the top. You don't want to add too, too much because you don't want to have it look completely white. Just gently rub right over the top and it just shows some nice highlights. There, what do you think? Looks cute. Even if the paint's still a little wet, it kind of even gives it a little bit of a green, different color green. Look at that. Look at that. That looks so cool. All right. And it might even add a little bit to the holly leaves. Just gives a little definition. There we are. Very pretty. Very fun. Just kind of hang on to it. Just gently rub over the top. And even though I got a little bit extra, that's okay. Just rub, rub it off with your finger. And it doesn't matter anyways because... I am going to paint this snowflake. I'm gonna just rub some of this off just in case I have some green paint on here. All right, grab some white paint. Now, how I wanna do the snowflake, it's interesting. So how I wanna do it for this, because I want it to be textured, I'm going to go like this. I'm going to like pounce that paint right on top, just like that. I'm going to pounce it right on top. And you can see it gives that nice textured look. Isn't that pretty? That's really nice. I like that. And that's going to go right on top. Okay, so that's our snowflake. I am going to antique that too. All right, so here is this. And I want to make sure I want to add a little color to it. So I'm going to get my red paint. I am going to use like a rust kind of color red. And they have some really nice colors. I didn't buy the Folk Art brand for the rust color. They do have a really pretty red from Folk Art. And it's this color here, the Imperial. That's a really nice color red. But I'm not going to use that one. I bought one from the craft store. And it's a Dixie Bell. There's Dixie Bell here. And there's also this one. There's um, this one's actually the same one. I bought two of the same. So this is a really pretty, like rusty red. I'm going to actually, this one's not open. This one's open. I'm going to use this one. This one is Rusty Nail. I like that one better. Rusty nail. And I'm just going to shake this up a little bit more. I'm going to shake this up. All right. Here we go. I really like this color because I feel like this is really like a good folk art color. Like if you're going for that really farmhouse style color a really nice rusty red color is really great for the berries but if you're going for the more traditional 
look, I would go with the regular red, that Imperial from the Folk Art. All right. So I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to use a small, a tiny little brush like this just to paint those, those berries. I'm just going to be really, really gentle with these. Doesn't have to be perfect. So there you go. Easy peasy. Um, I'm not even like being careful. And it's really not, not that big of a deal. I just get a little small brush. There you go. Okay, that's it for that one. Easy peasy. And then I'm gonna come over here and get these ones. Get this one here. And you don't have to paint these a different color. I'm just doing it because I thought, why not? All right. Cute. And then I'm gonna get this big one here. Grab some more paint. I just dip my paint right in the cap, my paintbrush right in the cap, just cause I'm not gonna waste paint by putting it into a container. Just dip that paintbrush right in there. All right, and I think that's pretty good. All right, I'm gonna get these last two. I don't know if you can see that, sorry, if I don't have that in front of the camera, I'm looking directly at it instead of the camera. a little trickier because it's close to that piece and here we are got a little bit more paint and here we go that's it and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint those extra pieces that are getting glued on. So ignore my fingers, they're a little messy. Just gonna hold on to them with my fingernails. And you don't have to paint them all the same color, you can do them different colors. I just really like this rusty nail color, it's really pretty. Grab the next one. I'm off camera, I just realized. Sorry about that. Here we are. And last one. And I think I'm gonna do those little, oops, I'm gonna do those small berries that go on the mistletoe. I think I might do those the same color. All right, there we are. I'm just gonna set those over here to dry. Here's these little guys. Definitely when you take these off the laser, make sure that you, you know, grab them, like maybe use a piece of uh, masking tape when you take them off so you don't lose any down your crumb tray. Oh, they're hard to set down. There we go. I definitely lost one down there. A little sad, but that's okay. I'm not going to take my crumb tray out to get it. I keep extras from other files laying around. So just in case, I need a circle. Like the circles of the ornaments, like the holes. I use those. I save them for eye dots and stuff. Always good to save those for things. You never know when you're going to need a little tiny circle for something. All right. Here we go. All right. All done with that. Now I'm going to come back and 
I'm going to work on the antiquing for these pieces. Okay, let's start with the back piece. All right, so this is the back piece. And I'm thinking I would like to, there's so many options. I think I'm going to use the ink pads. I might regret it, but I'm gonna give it a try. So I have a lot of these, I have a lot of ink pads. So I have all of these and they do sell these great little storage containers for them. So I have a lot, I have an addiction to buying craft supplies. Not sure about how you guys are, but I definitely have an addiction to craft supplies. I can't stop buying. Like, I need to like, when I go past Michael's on my way home from work, I'm like, nope, just keep driving, just keep driving. Don't stop. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and just kind of rub this along the edge and just keep going and get that edge. And you're not gonna see the very edge because you're gonna be gluing the window over that. But then I'm gonna start dragging it. I'm gonna see how I like this. I mean, I don't know, we'll see. It's actually looking pretty cool. Kind of gothic. I like it. All right, let's see. I don't know. Looking kind of cool. Like I said, I'm learning as I'm going. So if it doesn't work out, it's okay. All right. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just rubbing that ink pad right over the top. It doesn't have to be perfect. It can look like an old mess. People might be thinking, what is she doing? Why is she doing this? That looks terrible. We'll see how it goes. All right, so there is my back piece. All right, let's try it again. Let's try it again on the front piece. Why not? I was gonna do the chalk or the crayon, the art crayon, but why not try this? Let's give this a try. I do have it in gray. I do have these in gray, but why not try it in black? Let's go bold, right? And try the gray on the ornaments. See how it goes. All right. Why not? And I could also do it the same way I did with the dry brushing. I could just get black paint and just dry brush instead of using these. So I'm just gonna turn this because there's like hairs growing. Look at that, it's like hairs growing on here. I don't want that. Let's pull that off. Weird, I don't want that. I never wanted this for you. Take that right off there. Okay, well that looks really cool. Look at that. Oh yeah, look at that. That's looking bold. Oh, it's looking kind of gothic. Neat. I should have done a Halloween one now. Like a spooky window for Halloween. Okay, thoughts for next year. Get started on that now. All right, look at that. Look at that. Looking cool. All right. Now I have a bug in my face. Okay. What do you think, huh? Like it? Thoughts? Too messy? Not messy enough? Add more? Looks good. I like it. I like that. That looks really neat. I think I want to add some gray. I think I'm going to use my gray one. What do you think? Or even brown. Brown would look cool. I'm going to add some brown. That's what I think I'm going to do really antique it up. So I have a lot of choices for the brown. I have every brown. Let's do, let's do this one. It is called Gathered, let's say Gathered Twigs. Yes, Gathered Twigs. Let's do Gathered Twigs for that one. I have way too many. Oh my gosh, like I literally have every brown. Like look at this, I have all these ones too. I have a problem. I have a 
witchcraft addiction. It's really sad. All right, ooh, look at that. Kind of really antique it up. All right, let's take a look. Let's see how it looks over this. Ooh, look at that. Very fun. I really like that. It really looks like it's an old window. I don't wanna go too crazy on this layer, I've decided, just cause I don't wanna go, I don't wanna like do too much antiquing. I feel like it will take away from all the florals and everything. So, especially because we already have antiquing on the other part. So I'm going to kind of just be subtle on this. So I am going to just add a little bit of my art crayon. And there's art crayon. They have these on Amazon. Get a whole package of them. I can show you the package too. I have a box, a package of them. Here's a package. That's how they come. You get these at Amazon. Um, I think they're like $15, $18 for a big pack of them. They're not very much. So that's how they come. I did buy the entire collection. Don't judge me. Um, I bought all of them. You don't wanna see my collection of them. It's really sad. Okay, I have problems. Alrighty. I'm just gonna like gently add a little bit of black just around the edges just for some color just just slightly antique it i don't want to go too crazy okay so there's that and i'm just going to kind of rub it in i don't want to go i just don't want to like compete too much all right and i'm just gonna kind of blend it and you can use a makeup sponge instead of your finger and I'm just gonna add a little bit here and there, just a little bit, and then I'm gonna blend it out. Blend, blend, blend. And if you decide you added too much, add more white paint. It's never permanent. Like for me, I'm like, mm, I like that, but I think I put too much on there, so no big deal, watch. Add a little bit of white, no big deal. Oh, I got it all in the middle there, a mess. So it's not that big of a deal if you over antiqued it. Just blend it out. That's why you have the white brush nearby. Always keep it nearby, keep it handy. All right, I think I am happy with this. All right, pretty good. All right, so now let's take a look at what this is going to look like. So there is my window. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm digging that. I think that looks really cool. So that I'm really happy with that. All right, then I'm gonna put this layer on top. What do you think? Loving it. I think I need some antiquing up here. Because I'm just going to like, because I still have some on my finger. I'm just going to kind of blend it. Because otherwise I think it's too stark. There we go. A little better. Yeah. That looks fabulous. I'm really happy. I'm going to hold it back here so you can see it better. All right. And not knock my paint over. I'm really happy with that. Okay. I'm going to set that over here. Love it. I'm going to even antique that up a little bit more. Because... That looks really cool. I am really happy with that. That looks so fun. I love that. Okay, sorry, I'm just excited because I'm seeing it for the first time too. All right, so I am going to start assembling and I like to use this glue. I'm gonna grab a fresh one so you can see what it looks like. I You can get this anywhere. Um, Michael's even has it. Um, Joann's has it, your, any of your local hardware stores, 
Lowe's, mm, Home Depot. Home Depot has a really good price on it. I got this at Michael's and then they had that 40% off coupon. So I bought every single one they had. Don't judge me. Okay. Because they are like $3 and some change. And I do go through them very quickly. The only drawback to using these is it dries so fast. That's the only concern I have is how fast it dries. I'm not a big fan of the speed of the drying. I feel like I just don't have enough time. So once you take it out of the box, you have to twist this. So twist it and then take the top off. And it's brand new, good to go. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and a little bit, a little goes a long way. Do not use too much of this. Just adding a tiny little dab. That's it, you do not wanna use a lot. So I'm just gonna go ahead, set it down and And you just want to press it together. And of course, this one is going to prove me wrong and not like instantly stick together like all the other ones. Yeah, look at that. It's not sticking immediately. Make me look like a liar. Well, it usually doesn't dry. It usually dries really fast. It usually doesn't take this long to dry. So I'm just gonna hold it here for a second. Make sure that every single piece lines up perfectly. I usually use my fingers to make sure that they're all lined up. All right. It is dry. That's dry relief. That's, that's a little longer than you usually takes. So you wanna make sure that this piece is lined up perfectly too. So I'm gonna go ahead, and put a little bit of glue on the back. I put a little bit more this time. Make sure you line this up so you have it correctly lined up because these are not all perfect. Um, they're not the same on every side. Each holly leaf is different. Okay. So make sure they're all perfect. And I'm not the most perfect gluer. I'm so far from being a perfect gluer. Um, you can use 3M too. 3M is another great product. Um, you stick that on the back um, of your wood before you cut. And then all you have to do is just peel and stick and you are done. So easy peasy. Okay, so that is done. <laughs> Uh, sorry, my nose is starting to run. It's a little it's starting to get a little cold out here now. Okay, so I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on here. My neighbors are on a golf cart going by. And I'm just gonna go ahead and this should fit perfectly right in there. There it is. Shouldn't have any problem with this fitting perfectly on here. There you go, I'm just gonna hold it on here. And there you go, it's already stuck on there. Okay. Next one is this piece here. Oops, a little too much there. I'm gonna wipe some of that off. And normally I would be putting my, um, my caps on my paints. Um, I wouldn't be leaving the caps off this long. I usually put those um, away as I'm going, but that would take a while for the video. So um, just make sure you're putting those tops on for 
the bit like um in real life here because chalk paint does tend to get chunky okay this dried really fast i didn't have a chance to even move that around a whole lot so there's that one and now i'm going to put on all my little pieces the little i'm just going to set it right on here my big piece there's one two, and three. Normally I'm not taking this long to do this. I'm usually going a lot faster. Um, so there's that. There's our little berries. And then I'm going to add those four berries here. I'm gonna go ahead. It doesn't really matter um, which ones you put where. Um, I'm going to put this one over here. There's one. I'm going to put this one right here. Oops. It's hard to see. Two. And put one over here. One more. There's a squirrel outside making squirrel sounds. Okay, so there are our little berries. Fun. So there's this piece, and then I'm going to decide how I want to put that on. I like to put the snowflake on very last. Okay, so I'm going to come back over to our church window. I'm going to bring this back over. I'm going to put my top on my ink so they don't dry out. All right. So I'm going to go ahead glue on just a little dot that's all I'm using that's it I want to make sure I get this on the first try so I don't smear any glue and I did And just make sure that all the sides line up perfectly. There we are. That's done. I'm just gonna put a little bit here. All right, just a little bit there. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and stick this on. And this does come with a back piece on um, the stand. So it does come with the stand and it's already dry. So there's it already dry and I didn't get a chance to even position it. So it's not glued perfectly. It's a little bit off I, by a hair. That's okay. It's just like by like a tenth of a millimeter, but all right. So yeah, be ready to have that stick the second you set it down. All right, and now 
we can put this piece on and you can put it on wherever you want I think I want to put it on kind of towards the middle like right here like that and it's gonna be like kind of going on these parts of the window so I am going to put the glue kind of like right here and right here and I'm going to just go ahead and set that on Oops. I need to do it with my right hand because I'm not left-handed there we go and I'm gonna set it on right there And like I said, a little bit of glue goes a long way. You do not have to worry about using a ton of glue. That's all you really need. You don't need to have this glued completely on here. That little bit of glue is going to hold that piece. All right, so there's that. And then a final piece. And then I will show you how the stand goes. I will grab the stand. So I went ahead and measured my wood to see which stand I'm going to need. I use MDF. So I think I'm happy with where that snowflake is. I'm like, just move it over just right here. There it is. I think it's pretty right about there. All right. I really like this. I think it came out really nice. So there is my church window. And that's it. I'll go get that stand and I'm gonna show you how the stand works really quick. So I cut two of these. And then I have this piece. So I always, I always always like to cut two of these. So I use, so there's four different um, angles of these included. So I chose the one that's all the way um, set back. So it has the steepest angle, um, not the one that's straight up because I feel like it tips forward more. So, um, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna glue this on the back. So first I like to glue them together first. So I just glue these together, the ugly sides <laughs> first. So there's, there's the stands, glue those two together. So there's our pieces. I always like to take the piece just to make sure that I didn't glue them crooked. So I always like to put that piece in there just to make sure. Okay. And when they're glued, I just want to make sure it's really glued good. You can cut this out of one fourth too. Um, just make sure that if you glue it out of one fourth, you still use the one eighth slot, even though, um, because it's whatever you're using for this piece. This is the piece that matters. Whatever thickness this piece is, this slot has to match because that's the piece that goes in there. Okay. So that's the important part. You can paint the back. Um, that's up to you. I'm gonna probably paint the back. So I just wanna show you how this works. So you're gonna glue this to the back and then this piece just fits right in there, just like that. Okay, you can glue that piece in, but you don't have to. Um, it just fits right in there. And then it just sets like that on the back. And then it stands up by itself and this piece comes right out so you don't have to so it stores flat so you can take that piece out that's the stand people keep asking me about that so I wanted to make sure I did a video to show you how the stand works so it's kind of like a little kickstand that goes on the back so that's how the stand works so you're gonna get um, 15 different um, thicknesses so it should fit every material all the way from 0.11 all the way to a quarter inch so there's every thickness in between so make sure you use your digital caliber and measure whatever this piece is 
So whatever this thickness is, that's the one you're going to choose and they're all labeled for you. So there's like 0 0.11, 0 0.12, 0 0.125, 0 0.126, 0 0.127. It's, it's all the way up to, um, I think it goes up to like 0.26. Um, so all different thicknesses of wood. So there's 15 different thicknesses um, included. So just pick which one matches your wood the best. Okay, so that is it. All right, I hope you enjoyed that. And then I'm going to go ahead and paint the ornaments. And it's the same kind of style as this one. So I'm not gonna do a separate video for those. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Bye.